the weather forecast with MTN. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and a privilege to have you join me once again on the weather forecast. I believe you had an excellent day. We look forward to a calm weather tonight, although with light showers expected in parts of the Little Isle and the center regions, and temperatures would get as low as 17 degrees in the northwest and west regions, with the Adamwa region as low as 18 degrees. We may expect the north, far north, center, east, and south regions to get as low as 20 to 21 degrees, and the southwest and Little Isle regions may get a minimum of between 23 to 24 degrees. In the until we take you over to the Little White region where light showers will dominate the region tonight and by morning we may have light showers persisting towns like Douala and Idea with a fully clouded sky and temperatures as low as 18 degrees. Next, we go over to the central region where light showers are expected in Ezeka tonight and by morning. No precipitation would prevail in the region although with a fully clouded sky. And we end with the Adamwa region where we have no chance of precipitation tonight and a similar situation to progress till morning with temperatures between 17 to 19 degrees. I encourage you to pay a visit to the Adamwa region and behold the beautiful traditional herds. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Members of the lower house of assembly on the House Speaker Honorable Kava Yega Jubrila examining the 2020-2021 finance bill and acquiescing government ministers on how they have been running their departments. The historic regional council elections are now upon us with slightly more than 48 hours to go. Political demagogues are convincing undecided voters while Elecam officials are making last-minute preparations. From Studio 5 of the CRTV Production Centre in Balatu, I am Benin Bumagana. This is the 7.30 News. Each of us must comply with the measures that have been taken. Once again, welcome the 2021 finance bill with a budget of 4,865.2 billion TFA francs is being examined at a plenary sitting chaired by House Speaker Honorable Kava Yege Jibril. The five-hour sitting, which is still going on, is a forum for the lawmakers to question members of government on the functioning of their ministerial departments and the capacity of the finance bill to meet the aspiration of the people. Esther Kima reports on the deliberation so far. A state budget of 4,865.2 billion CFA friends for the 2021 financial year scanned in every detail by the Committee on Finance and the Budget in five days. The outcome of the scrutiny is presented before the entire House for general debates. House Speaker Honorable Kavaega Jibril presiding is joined by the members of government to listen to the two-hour, 30-minute accounts of the deliberations presented by the General Rapporteur of the Committee, Honorable Edgar Ndongo Etemi, a bill which presents a budget increase of 232.5 billion CFA francs as compared to 2020 and a growth rate projected at 3.3 percent, but considered not realistic enough for the Social Democratic Front. Honorable Jean-Michel Ninche, in a preliminary objection, calls for the non-examination of the budget due to government's non-respect of the 15-day deadline to deposit the bill before the start of the budget recession. With five votes cast for the rejection of the bill and 96 against, the adherence of the majority of the lawmakers sets the stage for the general discussions. Youth unemployment still rife in the country, the flaunting of provisions of the fiscal regime of the states vis-a-vis -vis the role of parliaments in controlling the execution of public finances, the non-allocation of funds to the Northwest region by 11 ministries, the intricacies of the import substitution policy 
plus 15 percent of the state budget to decentralize collectivities, the concerns abound. The grilling of ministers will continue prior to an eventual adoption of the 59 section finance bill for 2021. Thank you very much, Esther. Government is assuring the population that all necessary measures have been taken to prevent voters and election officials from contracting the COVID-19 virus on election day Sunday. The Minister of Territorial Administration officials of the Ministry of Public Health and the Director General of Elections Cameron today outlined the work done so far to attain this objective in a press conference. Constantine Baum tells us more. Sunday is the DD for Cameroon's historic regional election. All has been set for the major event, with measures taken for the event to be COVID-19 conscious. The head of State President Paul Bia gave instructions that we should put in place necessary barrier measures so that the elections will take place in total conformity and the protocol, health protocol put in place by the government. Eleka must receive all the necessary assistance to organize a hitch free election, including the means to effectively implement barrier measures in all polling stations. All protocols will be respected by all the persons who will be in the polling station, particularly the electors and the members of electoral commissions. The Minister of Public Health is one of the key stakeholders for Sunday's polls. Our strategy is the same to to continue to track, to test, and to treat. It is the first time Elekam is managing election during a pandemic, but all has been done to reduce the risks of voters and election officials contracting the virus, as the election is a major step in fast-tracking the much-needed decentralization process. As you heard, we have slightly 48 hours to go to the December Pioneer Regional Council elections in Cameroon. The Fundi Divisional Branch of ELECAM is making last-minute touches for the polls. Elections material have been made available, and this time, those living with disabilities can easily access and use them. General Nanja Eyambe brought back this report from the ELECAM Fundi office. A busy Elecam Fundi branch office Friday as some electors look up for their electoral cards. As a traditional ruler in Kondengi, I am happy to have received my electoral card that will enable me to vote on Sunday. Last minute adjustments are on course. The electoral materials, which equally include braille for the visually impaired, are set for dispatch to voting centers. We have taken measures for visually impaired because it is an inclusive election. Figures from this office indicate that the two electoral colleges in Fundi constitute a total of 428 electors. Of that number, 146 traditional rulers of two lists will be voting in two polling stations hosted at the government technical high school Shah Atangana. For their part, 282 municipal councillors of the CPDM and FDC party will compete over votes in three polling stations at the government Balingua Primary School Bastos. Sunday's pools is expected to be organized in strict respect of the COVID-19 barrier measures. Out of the December 6 regional council elections, election monitors from a network of civil society actors of Central African sub-region have received training on observing elections come Sunday's polls. The training was organized by the National Commission on Human Rights and Freedom, a long-time observer of elections. Beatrice Losamba reports. It is time to join the race for this course of election monitors from six countries of the network of Central African civil society actors. Two days to the election, they are revising their notes in assessing the conduct of the electoral process. If this is the first time I will be observing elections, it will be an experience that will propel me as an international observer. The National Commission for Human Rights and Freedoms is giving them the tips on how to go about Elections Day proceedings. They'll play a key role in determining the credibility of the election. In our mandate, we generally observe ourselves elections and for now, with this civil society organization, our experts, which have received a special training, will contribute in training the 
observers of this civil society organization. Their monitoring activities contribute in promoting democratic elections and engages citizens in the electoral process. President Paul B. has reorganized the Telecommunication Regulatory Board. Signed on the 3rd of December 2020, the president gives the regulatory board wider powers to sanction defaulters in the sector. Chief Unity Palace correspondent Ashun Yenti reviews the innovations in the decree and the rationale for the administration. With new circumstances come new ways of doing things. The presidential decree of the 3rd of December 2020 Reorganizing or rebooting the Telecommunication Regulatory Board has enabled the board to be in conformity with the 2017 law on public establishments, but also especially with the OHADA Uniform Act on Commercial Companies and Economic Interest Groups, which is a supranational instrument to which Cameroon is a state party. This is another proof that Cameroon respects her signature on the international scene. With the Telecommunications Regulatory Board fostered on the OHADA law, the auditors who have the early warning duty or whistleblowing duty in commercial companies now assume greater powers than the accountants and financial controllers as it used to be the case in the old dispensation. Furthermore, the Regulatory Board is no longer just a figurehead. Its powers have been bolstered, allowing for sanctions. It does not only back, it can now also bite, with the possibility of withdrawing licenses from mobile telephone operators who violate the law or whatever action deemed inappropriate. In addition, this reform engendered by the presidential decree has given the Telecommunication Regulatory Board the privilege du trésor, which means the exclusive priority to recover debt due in the telecommunication sector. Dependable sources say the state today is owed more than 50 billion francs in this sector. This reform has become necessary to give RLT a better strike force in the always evolving market structure in a sector that is not only dynamic, but is also flourishing in an economic gold mine. According to 36, each year the telecommunication sector generates nothing less than 800 billion francs CFA. Little wonder that Paul Bia's reform has ensured that the economic interests of Cameroon and consumers are guaranteed in the deal. It is only necessary for the different actors to put their acts together so that this reform meets a fertile ground. In 18 months, the Yaounde 5 Council will have a new edifice. The foundation stone of the structure in Kormeseng was laid today by the Minister of Decentralization and Local Development, George Elanga Obam. Yoti Kale Lisonge reports on the ceremony as well as the impact of the building on the development of the area. On this surface area of 3,000 square meters in Kolmeseng will stand a five-story building, the Yaounde 5 Council, as illustrated on this 3D model. With the laying of the foundation stone and a toast to progress, the countdown for construction work begins. We are going to be here in one and a half year, and for sure we are going to see that the town is changing, the town is progressing with the other investment that the state is going to make in this area. The Special Council Support Fund for Mutual Assistance, FACOM, has disbursed 2.5 billion CFA francs for the realization of the project, which also comes with more development in the locality. I want to reassure my population that we intend to launch the works of our important road. We also have uh, other important projects. This gift symbolizing a good hunt is then handed over to the minister as Yaounde 5 looks forward to greater achievements. The fourth edition of the Miss Handicap Cameroon competition has come to an end with uh, Mawamba Cristel emerging as the most beautiful lady living with a disability. This was during a contest which took place last evening in Yaoundé in the presence of officials of the ministries of social affairs and those of arts and culture. Let's get details from you, Gerard Nanji Eyambe. 
Mawamba Christel from the West Region of Cameroon was able to win the minds and hearts of the jury and the spectators in a brilliant fashion. Out of the 15 contenders who took part in this fourth edition of the Miss Handicap Cameroon competition, she demonstrated a mastery in all categories. I am very happy to have won the prize. I am determined to help others in similar condition. The artistic and cultural event, which saw Kiven Law Ketcher clinching the runner-up prize, was a pointer to the fact that disability is not synonymous to inability. We intend to continue our activities here in Yaoundé. The winner will have a free training in a professional domain of her choice and a cash prize of 300000 This was part of the 2020 edition of the World Handicap Day. The populations of Bangwa and Bangang Fokam in the Nde Division and Badre Fam in the Kunki in the West Region have expressed gratitude to the President of the Republic, Paul Bia, for the ongoing construction of the road linking Bangwa, Badre Fam and Bangang Fokam. They sent their gratitude through Housing and Urban Development Minister Celestine Kecha Cotez to the President, as we hear in this report by Chanceline Nanze. Workers of the company constructing the 10 kilometers road linking Bangwa, Bandrufam and Bangang Fokam are at work. The stretch has been well traced and gutters are being created. The execution rate stands at close to 40 percent. For the 5 kilometers Chantal Bia Avenue in Bangangte, works are at 60 percent. The Minister of Housing and Urban Development has expressed satisfaction with the rate of advancement and has instructed the different companies working on this road to make use of the dry season and complete the project. We want to see all these contractors working by taking into consideration the well-being of the population. The inhabitants of these villages have said at the stage where constructions are, the roads have greatly improved on their living conditions, stating that upon completion, they will facilitate the transportation of farm produce to the market. To show their gratitude, the rulers of Bangwa and Bangangfokam offered the minister traditional articles. The Mindu boss also made a stop at the new building of the Bangangte Council. The minister delegate at the Ministry of External Relations in charge of the Commonwealth, Felix Mbayu, has identified violent extremism in the Northwest as a serious threat to national unity and security. During a two day workshop in Bamenda, organized by the Interministerial Committee for the Coordination of Commonwealth Activities, Minister Mbayu suggested that a social ill can only be tackled if the population denounces the perpetrators of violent extremism. Ola Titanki tells us more from Bamenda. extremism in the northwest region hold that this rising social ill that manifests through kidnappings, beheading, destruction of infrastructure and sexual violence have caused several persons to relocate to other regions. The minister delegate to the Minister of External Relations in charge of Commonwealth is of the view that violent extremism requires concerted action. Start by reporting all those who live with you who are involved. These guys don't come from us. They live in the society. You know them. Denounce them. That is the most important thing, report them to the forces of law and order. Participants at the workshop are envisaging a people-based approach to resolve the rising trend of violent extremism. We need to go back with street art in the streets, get young people out of the streets to, through art, you know, give them an alternative activity. It gives young people a sense of belonging. The two-day seminar for humanitarian actors to brainstorm on new strategies on combating violent extremism region comes weeks after several attacks recorded on school buildings, pupils and students in the restive northwest and southwest regions. Of course, let's uh, get over to Douala and to get this uh, advertorial on MTN. MTN Cameroon has started distributing cars to its loyal and local, lucky clients. The Win a Car a Day reward campaign started in November 2020 became a reality this December 2nd in the day. The first winner was handed over a car in the presence of the deal of a day, one and a cross-section 
of onlookers and well wishes. Benyala Veronica reports. It is a dream from another dimension for Miss Bibian Law Epo. At 28, owning a brand new car was still a far fetched dream. MTN Cameroon has jolted her to the sweetest of all realities. With her car keys in hand, satisfied smile on her face, the proud owner of this brand new Suzuki Expresso stepped into her car and rumbled the engine. The cost of this car for Miss Bibian Law Epo is nothing more than her loyalty to MTN Cameroon. She was selected randomly among clients. Her joy is overflowing. It is almost unbelievable. I always buy my bundles for my calls. To my greatest surprise, I receive a message that I've won. I didn't believe the first person would call to announce, but he insisted I check the message on WhatsApp and realize it was my number. So I went ahead to verify with 8787, and it was confirmed that I am the winner of this car. After 20 years of satisfaction in Cameroon, MTN has ruled out a number of reward gifts to its clients, with each client who consumes 5,000 francs a week eligible to win a car. According to Sandra Hando of MTN Marketing Department, MTN is doing more this December. Apart from the car, there is cash reward. We have already registered over 480 persons, winning 20,000 francs every 20 minutes. MTN Cameroon, that price itself as a citizen enterprise, will pursue this car gift campaign, which kicked off last November 20 until February 17, 2021. On where to go to for form this weekend, Romeo Kenyi tells us that Makosa, a superstar, Le President de Dedo à Paris, Georges Asejo Polo, and other artists who present shows this weekend in Gaoundé and Douala. For more on the weekend cultural rendezvous, here is Romeo Kenyi. After a hectic week, artists made themselves available to free you with their music and film throughout the weekend. Sergio Polo will be at Felicita Lounge at Cité Palmier in Douala this Friday from 8 p.m. He will be entertaining fans with songs fresh from his best collections. C'est comme ça l'histoire, le petit du quota qu'on appelait déco. Friday, the Kang Kang Boys, one of the newcomers on the music scene, will be enchanting fans with Chapel Chapel at Katios Nightclub in Yaoundé at 10 p.m. They will be healed by another young singer, Daniela Ahanda. And that's not all. Blanche Bailey gives the rendezvous in Betoua, East Region, tonight for an exceptional show. Il est temps qu'on vive. And on to cinema, the Cameroonian film director, Francoise Elon, invites movie lovers to Douala tomorrow. Her movie, Les Enterrés, will be premiered at the French Institute of Douala. Happy weekend. Let's cut into the second contour of this newscast and talk about the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Baldwin Saman, who is standing by at the Public Health Emergency Center, says 24,560 persons have been tested positive for COVID-19 in Cameroon since March this year. Quite a Hello, Baldwin. Good evening to you, Benin Bumagana. I effectively I confirmed those figures knowing very well that when the month of December 2020, nine months after the first coronavirus case was confirmed in Cameroon in the month in the month of March this year, so far 24,560 Cameroonians have been tested positive for the coronavirus since March this year, and we have had 23,344 Cameroonians who have recovered from this virus. And since March this year, 441 Cameroonians 
patients have died of for the COVID-19, and we have a recovery rate. It is quite impressive. Uh, the recovery rate stands at 95 percent so far, and a very low death rate that stands at 1.7 percent. And uh, public health experts during the traditional uh, press briefing this evening used the opportunity uh, to remind all those involved in uh, the Sunday's elections that uh, the respect of for our land barrier measures uh, m must be taken into consideration, such as a physical distancing and equally uh, the regular washing of uh, their hands in the different polling stations, uh, given that uh, all those who have been retained to work in the different polling stations uh, have been tested negative for COVID-19 equally, and others who will be working in most of these police stations who have not yet been screened for COVID-19, they have been reminded that they should have themselves screened for the coronavirus before Sunday. And when you look at these figures, what one notices is the fact that uh, there has been a slight increase in the number of uh, persons tested positive for COVID-19 nationwide simply because some persons have uh, vehemently refused to respect most of these outlined barrier measures. Just to remind our viewers that so far we have had 24,560 Camunians tested positive for COVID-19, uh, 23,344 persons who have recovered from the virus, 441 Camunians have died of the coronavirus since March this year, and we have an impressive uh, recovery rate that stands at 95 percent. Back to you, Benin Bumagana. Thank you very much, Baldwin Samaf and Cayman. Muslim faithful from Nigeria and Cameroon converge on the Grand Mosque in Yaoundé to pray for peace and prosperity in the country, especially as at the moment when the country is preparing to uh, host or hold the regional council elections. Let's get details from Victor Siga. Before Allah, they entrust a common prayer that of peace to reign in Cameroon and for a history regional election come Sunday. We are going through regional election and uh, the unity and the peace of this country, you know, has been a period of paradise, you know, despite all the efforts they done by the head of state. The traditional rulers, the religious leaders have a role to play. We as Muslims, we as Christians, we as believers of God, you know, we have to put our hands together, our minds together, to pray for the peace and unity in the, of this country. A pellucid message expected to be preached by every Muslim faithful everywhere they are. The crisis in the northwest and southwest regions also receives special prayers. The most important message to the Cameroonian people is that they should continue to embrace peace, to love one another. Differences of religion uh, should not lead them, lead them to discrimination. For three days, they implored the heavens to Simai on Cameroon. Prayers they believe Allah will intercede for Cameroon. Let's go back to Douala, where 110 children have received birth certificate after a workshop uh, organized uh, in, in Douala. This workshop is uh, coming. It was noticed from statistics that so many children are born and they grow up without birth certificate. So uh, let's get over to Douala. And when we get to Douala, we'll definitely also talk about uh, the digital show where actors in the digital sector in uh, Douala are brainstorming on better ways of improving activities of the sector with focus on helping the Cameroon Administrative Service, which is still lagging behind in terms of digi digitalization. This is within the framework dubbed Douala Digital Show with objective to connect actors in the sector to a single network for better opportunities. Let's get over to Douala for details. Gone are the days when things used to be done manually as the digital world has rapidly gained grounds in almost every aspect of life. But the administrative system in Cameroon, in spite of the presence of digital tools, is still lagging behind. This was the key point of discussion during the second edition of the Douala Digital Show, with actors brainstorming to find a solution to this problem. It became impossible for our administration to continue to work and to perform without uh, having a digital system that gives them access to the right information. So at this level, it's even mandatory for our administration to move to a digital system that we allow them to access to the right information and to improve the quality, the quality of the life of our people. Going digital equally comes with some challenges, such as cybersecurity and cost. 
The event also serves as a platform to create a network of actors to easily connect and share ideas on the advancement in technology and to carry out business-to-business -business transactions. Duala will surely be bringing to us a story on birth certificate to 110 kids, uh, maybe in the subsequent newscasts. In sports, a one-week football competition dubbed Festive Food Solidarity will kick off this Sunday at the Mbankomo Sports Complex. The tournament will involve players of the League 1 and 2 of football teams and will offer an opportunity for players of the Intermediate Lions to stay in form ahead of the African Nations Championship. Sean Baldwin Sama has the details. It would be a golden opportunity for some football teams to get involved with different football matches at a time when there is no ongoing football competition in the country. Football teams, and especially players, through festive food solidarity, will see players maintain team spirit and turn down different proposals coming from foreign clubs. Festive food solidarity will promote the image of the country's football and permit players to stay in top form. Among the teams to participate in this competition are Cameroon's Intermediate Lions. They who are not in camp presently will play several matches against teams like Tone Calava Club, Apeje Sonfu, Renaissance of Gumu or Dragon of Yawunde, with the matches expected to serve as a litmus test for coach Martin Tungumpile and his boys as they prepare for the upcoming African Nations Championship. For one week, therefore, this competition will serve as a solution to the lack of competition crisis faced by the intermediate Lions. Thank you very much for following up with the uh, 7.30 News. Lucrez Mabenga is going to be here for the 8.30 News. And at uh, 9 o'clock, you will meet Dudu Nicole and Gladys Atta for uh, campaign news as campaign news as the elections draw nearer. Thank you. Good night. In this connection, we should avoid stigmatizing 